Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. This lesson is about compound interest. And we'll see when all said and done if it's worth it or not. But first I'm going to explain what compound interest is. Um, we had the equation for simple interest that the interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. All right. Compound interest is when you get interest on interest. Let me explain an example. If I have $100 in my bank account, I get 2% interest. At the end of the year, if I use the simple interest equation, I would say the principal times the interest rate times the time of one year, I would get $2 interest. So in my bank account, I would have the $100 I put in there plus my $2 interest. The next year, I would get interest on that full amount. I would get interest on the not just $100, the principal, but also on the $2 that is in there. Okay? And here's how that would work. I'll take my $200 or $102, leave it in the same bank account. How much would I have? Then when I use the print simple, print simple interest equation, I would have the principal of $102 times the rate times the time, which would give me $2.04 at the end of the year. So I add that to my $102. So now instead of just getting $2 interest, I'm getting an extra $0.04. And that four cents would go in here. The next year, I would get interest on not only my one hundred four dollars, but also the four cents I got of the interest from the two dollars. Anyway, so basically, it would continue to build, and you're earning interest on interest, and it is usually just a little bit at a time. All right. So, what um, this simple example showed you was exactly what I'm saying. You're earning two dollars a year the first year. You earn two dollars four cents the second year. You're going to earn a little bit more each time. All right. Now, one more note to make. Instead of finding the interest amount and then adding it to the original amount, like what we did, we found the interest amount on the one hundred dollars, and we found that it was two dollars, and then we added the two dollars to the one hundred dollars. If you just multiply it. Instead of multiplying it by just the interest rate, you can multiply it times 100% plus the interest rate, and I'll show you how that works. So here's our example. If, if you have $200, the interest rate is 2%, how much would you get after one year? You can use the simple interest equation and multiply $200 times 0 0.02 times one year, and you would get $4. Or, you, instead of multiplying it times 2%, multiply it times 102% or 1.02, and then you would just get the amount that you would have in your bank account. Okay? So, um, again, the, the change here is that instead of multiplying it times 0 0.02 or multiplying it times 1.02, and multiplying times 1 is just the same as you, 200 times 1 is 200. So, we're going to use that when we move forward, multiplying times 1.02 instead of times 0 0.02. And it will give us, instead of giving us the amount of interest, it will give us the amount of interest plus the initial amount, the principal that we had invested. So let's go ahead and work through a couple of these problems. I invest $1,200 at 3% compound interest. How much do I have after five years? With these types of questions, it's nice to have a table that shows the year the principal investment for that year, and then the amount of the principal plus the interest. And so my principal amount is $1,200. I'm going to multiply 1,200 times 1.03. As I explained earlier, you multiply it times 1.03, you'll get the amount plus the interest. If you multiply it just times the interest rate, then you would have to add 1,200 to it. You'll get the same exact amount. But all right. So now I take the amount that I have, $1,236, and that becomes my principal for year two. And then I'm going to just follow the same process. My principal for year two times 1.03 will give me $1,273.08. And that becomes my new principal amount that I then multiply times 1.3, and we just continue this process. Now it's $1,300. Multiply $1,311.27 times 1.03, I got $1,350.61, and that becomes my principal for year five. My final amount that I would end up with after five years, compound interest, 
would be $1,391.13. Now, the question I asked at the beginning, is this worth it? Well, I decided I'd throw that in there as well. If I use just the simple interest equation, which I'll show down here, the simple interest equation would be that the interest amount is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. The principal of $1,200, the rate of 0 0.03, and the time of five years would give me $180 interest if I just invested it with simple interest giving me a total of $1,380. And we, so you can compare that amount to the amount that I have here, $1,391.13, and then the difference is $11.13 over five years. All right? So that's the difference between um, investing it with compound interest for five years versus investing in just simple interest over the course of five years. Obviously, the more money you invest, the more the difference would be. All right. Now, this also begs the question, what if it compounds faster? So if it starts compounding every month or so, then you're getting interest on the interest from each month all year long. And you do end up getting a little bit more. So one way to calculate this, and there, there are a couple ways. One, you could divide the time in half. If it's like, if you're doing, here's an example that, if we divide the interest by the number of times it compounds, that's one way. So we can divide the interest by however many times it compounds, or you can divide the time by however many times it compounds. Well, what I'm going to do is divide the interest. It works out exactly the same. So my example, I'm going to invest something at 3% interest and have it compound four times per year. So for my multiplying purposes, what I'm going to do is take 3% and divide it by four which gives me 0.75 of a percentage. And that's how much I'm going to earn each quarter. All right. So here is my question. I'm going to go ahead and solve it. I invest $1,200, 3% interest, compounding quarterly or four times a year. So how much would I have after one year? So I'm going to take each quarter. I'm going to go ahead and solve for that. I have $1,200. And here is where the tricky part comes in. I'm multiplying it times one point. Remember, my percentage increase was 0.75, so I shift the decimal twice. So I'm multiplying it times 1.0075. So in my first quarter, the first three months, I earn $9 interest, which brings my total up to $1,209. Now, what that means is that for the rest of the three quarters of the year, I'm going to be gaining interest on that $9. I'm not going to be gaining the full amount of interest um, because it's only for three quarters of the year. All right. Well, let's bring that principal amount down here, $1,209 times my 0 1.0075. And that gives me another, an added $9.07, which adds on there, gives me $1,218.07. That will become my principal for the next quarter. Multiply it through my principal for the final quarter, and we multiply it through. So in the course of one year, I have earned $36.41 in interest, and it, that is if it compounds quarterly. I'm going to do a quick comparison as well. What if I just invested $1,200 and it compounded just one time over the course of that year? I would have had $36 interest making a total of $1,236. So the difference with compounding quarterly versus compounding annually was a difference of $0.41 cents for my $1,200 invested at 3%. Now, just, just to kind of give you a little bit of a comparison. So remember, last time we, we had a difference of $11. That was over the course of five years. If you were to calculate compounding quarterly for those five years, you would make, um, it would be, uh, again, a difference that would increase the amount of money. I'm not sure how much. It would be a really big table. All right. But it would be the same basic principle that you, the more times it compounds, the more money that you'll make. And the more you invest, obviously, the more that you would get back in interest. But here's just a quick table to show how to do that. Hope the video has been helpful in showing you how to calculate the interest on a compounding 
percentage interest.